What's up, 819S? So today I want to talk about homesickness. I've lived in Japan about 12 years and homesickness is something that I've experienced and I've watched other co-workers and friends and, and other people I've met experience. Uh, it, it basically goes through cycles where you go through kind of, not extreme, but, but very high peaks of happiness and then oftentimes very low peaks of sadness where you kind of miss everything about where you're from. So, in the case of Japan, everything is different from America. Everything. Uh, TV programs, food, uh, daily life, ev everything. There's nothing that I would say is comparable. So, I think it's one of those cases where you can have extreme happiness and extreme sadness. And when you first come, everything is new. So you feel extremely happy. You're like, what is that? What is this? What is that? Why do people do this? Why do people do that? And you know, if you're a curious person like I am, then you just, you get lost in all of these cool new things that you get to experience. If you're not that curious of a person, there's still a lot of interesting things because everything is new. So you're going to have to learn to adapt to your kind of your new life in a way. From my experience, the peaks get really high in the beginning and then they get really low in the beginning. And the longer you spend in a place, the more time you spend in a place, the, the smaller the wave is. But it's kind of like a sine wave. It, you go up, you go down, you go up, you go down. It's a kind of rhythm. And if you, if you understand that it's going to happen before you come, before you go to a foreign country to live, it's really easy to get used to it. Some of the things that you need are, for example, TV programs or access to TV programs. Because, you know, your daily life now, you may come home from a hard day's work or whatever, and you sit down and watch your favorite TV show. Well, if you're in a country like Japan, you don't have access to those TV shows. So it can be a little bit hard to unwind in the same way that you're used to. And at first, all the things you're going to experience are new, so it doesn't actually impact you the same way. You can watch Japanese TV and you're like, wow, this show's so crazy, I never expected something like this. And then, you know, once you get used to that or you get bored with that, then you go, I want to watch Lost, I want to watch this TV program that I'm really familiar with from my hometown, but it's not, it's not available or not available easily. <clears throat> Another common one is food. When you come to Japan, when you come to Japan, there's a lot of really great food, but it's not always things that you're familiar with, and therefore it's not something that can provide comfort in a time of, I don't know, for lack of a better word, sadness. It's not really sadness, it's not really depression, but it's sort of a a longing for the things that you had that you kind of miss. I think missing you, you miss people. That's the kind of better way to describe it. There's a big difference between the way I lived when I first came to Japan and people nowadays. So when I first came here, of course we had Skype, but it was, you know, it wasn't always the, the most stable connection. It didn't always provide the best picture. It wasn't always the best system. Now we have FaceTime, which I think is a much, much, much superior platform. And you can get these really clear and crisp pictures. So if you miss your friends and family, the best thing to do is FaceTime or Skype with them. And it can provide some instant comfort. The only thing you have to be careful of is that a lot of times friends and family will say things like, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? It's a fair question because they miss you as much as you miss them. But I think if you have something you want to achieve and you haven't achieved it yet, it can, it can make you feel a little bit down in a way. I hope that makes sense.
So one of the important reasons to explore when you go to a new country is because you want to be able to find things that can provide you with some comfort. Uh, for example, in Japan, there's a coffee shop called Kaldi. Kaldi has a lot of imported goods usually, so if I want to find some like American snacks or something that I might have been familiar with eating in America, I can go there and I can often find it. Maybe not exactly what I want, but I can often find it. Of course, it's not a replacement for going back to my hometown or anything like that, but, you know, it's a step in the direction. So the timing of it will absolutely vary from person to person. For some people, the, the happy time may last, you know, two or three or four months, and for other people, it may only last two or three weeks. The low periods may last longer or shorter. It's really going to depend on you and the country you move to and, you know, the reason for wanting to move there. There's a lot of variables to consider. In fact, I think, in fact... Wow. In fact, I think some people may actually experience the, the negative first. I think it's a little bit more on the rare side. If you wanted to move to that country, you probably wouldn't experience the negative first. But it, I don't think it would be impossible for that to happen. But what do you do when you start to experience the sadness or the, the negative emotions? That's the big question for a lot of people. And I think what it takes is a little bit of introspection. You need to look inside yourself and find out what is causing the sadness, if you can find it. Uh, for some people, it'll be pretty obvious. They'll, they miss their daily routine. Whatever they did in their routine is something that they're not able to do in the country that they've moved to. And that's what it is that they miss. Again, it could be food, it could be TV, it could be friends or family. There's so many possibilities. I think those are the big ones, but it, there's so many possibilities. And then you need to find out how you can alleviate that, you know? If it's friends and family, then get on FaceTime, get on Skype, you know, get on Facebook or whatever it takes and communicate with those people. Get in touch. You can let them know how you feel. Let them know that you miss them. But, you know, remember that this feeling that you're going through will pass and you will feel better so you don't have to make it a big dramatic thing when you talk to them just hey I miss you guys hope everybody's doing good that's it and the happy point will come back definitely that's the way the cycle generally works if it's something that you really can't find a solution to then maybe living abroad is not the right answer for you it's a really, really difficult thing to live in a foreign country. And if you have a reason to want to do it, then it becomes easier and easier. If you don't have a reason, just the idea of living there is, is cool or fun or interesting, then maybe it'll be a little bit harder for you. If nothing else, living abroad should make you a more introspective person, that's for sure. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, a few days ago, I missed one of my uploads because I was really having trouble with uh, Microsoft Hyperlapse Pro. It kept crashing and I kept restarting it and it was taking hours and hours to process. So I started cutting the clips down shorter and oh, it was a nightmare. And when I finally did get something that, I, that was usable, I felt like it wasn't really usable. It was not exactly what I was hoping for a little bit it sped up and slowed down inconsistently and I don't know it's a good concept but it didn't work the way I wanted it to and I had already put so many hours into the video and I don't think there was any way for me to recover it so I just uploaded it the way it was without going through all of the extra stuff that I wanted to add to it uh, then yesterday I missed the upload again because I wasn't able to record yesterday. I had an idea for a video yesterday and it started raining and I wasn't able to go out and shoot. So when it started raining, I went through all of the old footage that I had on my computer and started actually started cutting stuff out and deleting stuff. Uh, I ended up deleting about 300 gigabytes of video files. Hours and hours and hours of footage just to free up the space and because those were videos that I had shot but I wasn't happy enough with to to release so 
I don't know. I need the hard disk space. At least for now. So thanks so much for watching guys. And I will see you tomorrow. Ride safe.